This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today, we're back with COVID, and there is still no evidence of direct physical damage that allows for coverage for business interruption. In the case brought by a company called Apple Annie, the California Court of Appeal found they suffered no direct physical damage, and I find that it's time to quit trying to get business interruption payments from insurers for COVID. The COVID pandemic and ensuing lockdown have generated a host of legal issues. One of the most momentous in terms of potential monetary liability is whether businesses ordered by government decree to close or suspend operations could get compensation under their business income coverage of the standard comprehensive commercial liability and property policies. The issue has generated opinions from different courts of appeal, all of which all of which have held that the issue comes down to whether the insured can allege it suffered direct physical loss or damage to the insured property. Having lost in the trial court, the insured Apple Annie LLC told the court that this appeal can be viewed as a referendum on whether those decisions were correctly decided. Counsel was right, but not as they expected. In Apple Annie versus Oregon Mutual Insurance Company, a decision of the California Court of Appeals on September 2, 2022, the California Court of Appeal refused to be swayed by the earlier Marina Pacific decision, which was digested in this blog earlier this year. At all relevant times, the plaintiff Apple Annie LLC operated restaurants in Marin, San Francisco, and Santa Barbara counties. Defendant Oregon Mutual Insurance Company issued Apple Annie a comprehensive liability and property insurance policy that is relevant to this case promised in general to pay for the direct physical loss or damage to covered property at the insured premises, and in particular to pay for the actual loss of business income you sustain due to the necessary suspension of your operations during the period of restoration. The suspension must be caused by direct physical loss or damage to property at the described premises. The loss or damage must be caused by are resulted from a covered cause of loss. According to Apple Annie's complaint in March of 2020, first the Marin and San Francisco Departments of Public Health and then the governor issued shelter-in-place orders, orders which Apple Annie alleged caused it to suspend business operations at all its locations, which resulted in immediate loss of business income. Oregon Mutual denied Apple Annie's claim for its business income loss. After a comprehensive survey of the subject, the court concluded that a business that closed pursuant to a government shutdown order had not suffered direct physical damage to the business's property. This, to the court, was a matter of plain English. It said, quote, the words of the phrase direct physical damage all have commonly understood meaning. Physical is defined as having material existence, perceptible especially through the senses, and subject to the laws of nature. Direct is defined as proceeding from one point to another in time or space without deviation or interruption stemming immediately from a source and characterized by close, logical, causal, or consequential relationships. Close quote. The presence of COVID-19 on plaintiff's property did not 
cause damage to the property, necessitating rehabilitation or restoration efforts similar to those required to abate asbestos or remove poisonous fumes which permeate property. Instead, all that is required for plaintiff to return to full working order is for the government orders and restrictions to be lifted. This case concerns an invisible virus that is present throughout the world. It is that general presence and not a specific physical harm to covered property that cause governments at all levels to consider restrictions. The question, therefore, to the court is one of widespread economic loss due to restrictions on human activities not by the consequences of direct physical loss or damage to the insured premises. Apple Annie contended that because the phrase physical loss of or damage is phrased disjunctively, loss of and damage to must each be given a separate meaning. Apple Annie reasoned because of this disjunctive framing, each concept must be accorded a separate distinct meaning, an interpretation of loss of that assigns it the same meaning as damage to would, in the opinion of the court, do violence to the language of the policy by rendering the former term surplusage. By contrast, the losses suffered by Apple Penny arose from closures intended to limit the spread of a virus that can carry great risk to people but no risk at all to a physical structure. The Court of Appeal decided to follow the reasoning in a case called Inns by the Sea and similar cases in acknowledging the generally recognized principle in the context of first-party property insurance that mere loss of use of physical property to generate business income without any other physical impact on the property does not give rise to coverage for direct physical loss. As the U.S. District Court Southern District of California stated, if, for example, a sick person walked into one of plaintiff's restaurants and left behind COVID-19 particulates on a court countertop, it would strain credulity to say that the countertop was damaged or physically altered as a result. The majority of cases in California and elsewhere are in accord. Most recently, on July 13, Division 7 of the 2nd District filed in its opinion in Marina Pacific Hotel and Suites LLC v. Fireman's Fund, the Court of Appeal went on to hold for the plaintiff insured on the basis it had pled the element missing from the three earlier cases. It adequately alleged direct physical loss or damage. Thus the court held Marina Pacific stated a claim for breach of the insurance policy and concluded because it was dealing with a demur where the court must assume all of the facts alleged are true. Because the insured actually alleged losses covered by Fireman's Fund policy, they are entitled to an opportunity to present their case at trial or in opposition to a motion for summary judgment. The judgment of dismissal based on the trial court's disbelief of those allegations, whether ultimately reasonable or not, needed to be and was in fact reversed. In sum, and in light of the foregoing, the court could not agree with Apple Annie's primary contention that the policy language, direct physical loss or damage to, including its disjunctive phrasing, is ambiguous and subject to a reasonable construction that supports coverage. Doing so, the Court of Appeal rejected what may be the two most consequential aspects of Apple Annie's position. One, that no physical alteration is necessary to show that the policyholder has suffered a physical loss of insured property 
If the governmental authorities issue orders that prohibit the policyholder from using the insured property for its intended purpose, and two, that physical loss of includes the loss of use of the insured property, even if that loss is temporary. A loss of use simply is not the same, according to the Court of Appeal, as a physical loss. Apple Annie made a new argument using a definition in the liability portion of the policy. A similar argument was made and rejected in the United Talent Agency, which observed that cases involving comprehensive liability coverage are limited benefit in determining the scope of property insurance coverage, which are two entirely different types of insurance coverages. While Marina Pacific held for the insured based on its pleading, in its supplemental brief, Apple Annie acknowledges that the case does not directly implicate Apple Annie's theory of coverage. At oral argument, the Court of Appeal asked counsel for Apple Annie, able counsel with significant experience in insurance coverage issues, what Apple Annie would or could allege. Given that the fact that this case has been pending for 25 months and the further fact that Marina Pacific has been extant for over a month, the court concluded that Apple Annie had not met the burden required of it to obtain leave to amend, and they thus denied the belated request. As I said when I digested the Marina Pacific case, the decision was limited to whether plaintiff had alleged a cause of action. And since they alleged that there was direct physical damage, they were entitled to try to prove it. They probably won't be able to, but they're allowed to try. And since, since this case was not brought to the Court of Appeal on a divorce finding, the lack of direct physical damage defeated the claim for business interruption like all of the other cases across the country. This video was adapted from my blog post at zelma.com slash blog. And if you found this video and the blog post to be interesting or useful to you, please refer it to your friends and colleagues so that they can also see the videos and read the blog postings by subscribing. They might also wish to subscribe to my Locals channel and my Substack commentary, where they can also read the blog postings and sign up for special blog postings and videos that are not available to the public at large. Thank you for your attention.